This is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We'll also go ahead and remove the S Pen. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. On the back side, there's a slot or hole by the camera bezel frame, which is for the back microphone. Beneath that cover, there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter. It picks up or detects sound from slight openings around the rings. There are 15 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna need to be disconnected. And then the graphite film needs to be peeled off from the bottom speaker assembly. The wireless charging coil is in the center and the NFC antenna is located on top. And there's graphite film covering both to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. Once we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. Now the cable for the autofocus and light sensor on the back can be disconnected. And then the top plastic cover can be removed. On this plastic cover, there are antenna lines, which are these light gray color lines. And here's the back. The front facing camera cable can be disconnected, but it's glued in place to the frame. These two are the 5G millimeter wave antenna cables. The cable for the S Pen. And the two flex cables connecting the top components to the bottom ones of the phone. There's one more flex cable which I believe might be related to the S Pen. And one more flex cable leading from the main board to the subboard. At this point, the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the top, there's an ultra wide lens, followed by the 108 megapixel wide angle lens, and the 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens and telephoto lens. All of the cameras, aside from the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone located on top and the LED flash is located over here. The main board is a multi-layer board design. The flex cables for the camera can be disconnected by just popping them off. The microphone for the back plate is located here, and the proximity sensor is located next to it. There's also graphite film over the back shield. Once the graphite film is peeled off, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM, and this thermal paste is the new thermal paste Samsung refers to as the Gel Tim, or TIM. It doesn't look anything out of the ordinary, and this is the same one that's used throughout the S22 series. However, I have noticed it's more evenly spread out over the chip. Here's a look at the RAM sitting on top of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor, and the ROM or storage located above it. There are two Phillips screws holding down the top speaker assembly that need to be removed. This top speaker assembly has those little white foam balls on the bottom and top corner. And here's a look at the other side. The bottom speaker assembly can now be removed. Looking at the bottom speaker assembly, there's a thermal pad on the bottom, as well as the little white foam balls, and the linear vibrator motor is located on the bottom speaker assembly as well. It's located behind the speaker. There's an extension flex cable which connects the screen to the main board. So for screen replacements, you should be able to pry off the screen from the front of the phone without having to disassemble the rest of the phone. However, it might be a little bit more difficult trying to align the screen 
with the flex cable to reconnect it when you're applying your new screen since you can't really extend this flex cable out too much. So you'd have to perfectly align the screen to the frame and seat it down and push down on the bottom of the screen to get the flex cable to attach to the connector. In some cases it might be easier to take the back plate off and remove the bottom speaker assembly so you can make sure the flex cable is connected properly. Because once you apply new adhesive to the front and you push down on your screen, if you didn't make a good connection with the cable, it will probably be difficult prying the new screen off without damaging it. Let's go ahead and disconnect the cable. And then we can disconnect the flex cables connecting the main board to the subboard. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard that need to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located here, and the SIM reader is located on the back. There's also a red rubber gasket around the charger port. As always with Samsung, there's no adhesive pull tabs to help pry the battery off, so we're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we have a better look at the stainless steel vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The color looks copper, but it's stainless steel. Once the protective film is peeled off on the bottom, it reveals the in-display fingerprint sensor. To pry off the cover for the S-Pen enclosure, we need to apply heat and gently pry it off. Here's a look inside the enclosure. The millimeter wave 5G antenna that's located on the top corner is held down with adhesive. So if you want to replace that, you have to heat it up and pry it off. And the one on the side of the phone is held down with two Phillips screws. So those two Phillips screws would need to be removed and then the antenna can be pulled out of the frame. Now some regions might not come with these antennas in the slot, but that does not mean the phone doesn't have 5G. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located here and it's held on with some adhesive. So if you need to replace the flex cable or buttons, you'd have to pry the flex cable off from the frame. And there's a metal and plastic bracket which is seated inside of the frame, which you do need to pull out, and that'll give you access to removing the physical keys. There's a rubber gasket and mesh filter on the bottom and top speaker openings on the frame, as well as the microphone openings. And there's a liquid damage indicator, which is a white sticker on the bottom, on the frame underneath the SIM reader. To pry the screen off, we need to apply heat to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we're going to use a suction cup tool to help us gain leverage to get a pry tone between the screen and the frame so we can work our way around and pry the screen off. Here's a better look at the screen. Prying the screen off was incredibly difficult and took a lot of time and patience. The adhesive around the screen holding it down is really strong, so especially prying a working screen off will require a lot of time. So I got the flex cable over here for the S Pen support, the cutout for the proximity sensor and a front facing camera, and the in display fingerprint reader. Now this fingerprint reader is soldered to the main screen, even though it has a cable connector over here on the bottom, so replacement screens would come with this fingerprint reader pre-installed. Once the screen is removed, there's layers of graphite to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film is peeled off, we have a better look at the stainless steel vapor chamber. Now again, the stainless steel may look like it's copper due to the color, but it's just probably color treated since I tested it with the most hardness scale and verified it to be stainless steel. Copper usually will scratch out a 3 and stainless steel around a 6. So by testing it, I was able to see some scratches starting from a number 6. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.